How many of y'all know there's a holy shift going on? Amen? That means you got to be ready in season and out. That means you got to be sensitive to the leading of the Spirit. That means that you and I must maintain our foundation no matter what the cost. Because we are entering a time right now where strategy has been released more and more. There are things that are happening in strategy that people don't see. Even though they're happening. There is spiritual strategy and physical strategy. Remember, it's a military operation. We are in what we call the second wind, which is increasing because the first wind that came multiple years ago came to start ripping out, pouring back, and opening areas of deception where it can be exposed. The second wind has come, and the first wind is still exposing and ripping back. While well, the second one has come and now is bringing provision and strategy. Provision and strategy. And so this is a part where the Holy Spirit is being to release the financial support to do the things of assignment. See, there is an area where you and I must maintain our foundation and when an assignments change, there's assignments that change. That means strategies change. Now, if you're not led by the Spirit, you'll still maintain your same strategy when the Holy Spirit's trying to redirect something. Let me give you an example just to, uh, there's a specific store you need to go to where your assignment is to go to the store and purchase something. Well, the pathway to that store, the directions are going to be different than the one you used to go to. Does everybody understand that? Now, you can't Google the strategy from God. Amen? It's not unwise or anything else. You need direction from the throne room of God and this strategy and the directions that he gives us. Remember, wisdom tells you what to do and understanding tells you how to do it. So each specific assignment has a specific strategy with direction and understanding. Now, if you're bound by tradition, you will miss it. You'll try to accomplish in a, a new assignment with the same strategy and it won't accomplish. Is everybody okay? Make any sense? Praise God. Because we are right now in what we call a new order. There's a new order of life. Everything is in a new order. The world is changing. Amen. Amen. And there are things that God allows to happen. Remember, he originally gave the world to mankind, and they blew it. So now he's restoring his body to begin to take over the world again until he returns. So we are the restrainers of evil while we are here. And in that, there are certain strategies that God is releasing to an accomplish a specific assignment. And he says, once you've accomplished this assignment, I release my promise. That's a reward. Now, remember, we talked about resistance. The reward is strength. Amen? When you're able to resist the enemy, the reward is strength. When you're able to overcome temptation, the reward is strength. God rewards you with more strength, which is actually an increase of anointing. In Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 15, everyone say new order. So there's a new order of life. In fact, when Jesus came and brought a new covenant, that established a new order to be led by the Spirit, no longer by rituals or tradition. Hebrew, chapter 10 and verse 15. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. But the Holy Spirit also witnessed to us, for after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts, 
and in their minds I will write them. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Now where there is remission of the, these, there is no longer an offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by what? A new living way, that is a new order, which he consecrated for us to the veil that is his flesh. And having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking to assembling ourselves together as a man or some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Again, we are in a new order of life built on the foundation of Christ Jesus, which is we call the foundation, the anointing, which is his presence, power, and truth of God Almighty that stays the same. Nothing changes that. Amen? Now, there's continued adjustments of strategies that align with the special assignments, but again, the foundation does not change. It doesn't what? change. It stays the same. You're found so there must be a secure foundation to be able to fulfill every assignment. Because if the foundation is not secure, the assignments will fall apart. They won't be completed. That's why many people don't complete things. Or they fall short from completing them. There's something that God has told everyone in this room. You have to search yourself out whether you completed it or not. And the only reason why you didn't is because your foundation was insecure. It's not solid. Amen? Or it would have been completed. And so when he gives us an assignment through his spirit, it comes in the process of, through his word, through his leading, through his unction. He begins to put things together that you don't understand yet. But understanding eventually will come. There's an end result of everything he assigns us to do. He doesn't always tell you the end result, but many times you can see the end result. See, there are things he doesn't have to tell you. There are things that are understood automatically. That's where your relationship with him is vital and your foundation is secure. Is everybody okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians 1. You know, even in our government, which is considered principality, amen, we see a whole new shift. Amen. We see, we see an area to where the demonic forces have infiltrated by deception and taken offices but they really haven't taken him. People don't realize. I don't even think Biden's in the White House yet. I think he's shooting out of, behind a green screen. In fact, in the inauguration, supposedly, I mean, they inaugurated his assistant before they inaugurated him. His vice president, supposedly. And the military turned their back on him. I don't even think he's in the White House yet. I think he's in some garage with a green screen behind him. I don't know. <laughs> All of this is a play out. It's a play out. It's a strategy. Because Christ, the foundation, is, is est establishing a global sting operation. This is a global sting operation by God Almighty to snare the enemy in their own net. And so the America can see. I don't know how far he'll allow things to happen, but he's going to allow things to happen to where people are going to be affected financially, 
spiritually. They're going to have to get closer to God like they've never gotten before. You know, they stopped production in the uh, pipeline. That means thousands of people are being laid off. They're going to lose their jobs. They've now commanded that there be no more sending back illegal immigrations to let them come and release the ones that they have, illegal immigrants. These are all commands from the fake president with the fake news, fake media. All of these things. Now, I don't know if they've been put into true practice or not, but these are all of these commands that he's releasing immediately. Because uh, why? Because this is the Antichrist spirit that is trying to destroy this country and to bring one world order. But we're coming to an area to where they want to dismantle everything. They want to destroy the stock market and everything so they can bring a reset of their, some, of their financial world. Where they have people under control. They want everyone. See, socialism is about the government controlling everyone. They offer you free this, free that, free that. But you don't get anything. They just tell you that and you wait in line until you die. That's what it's about. And then when you go to their schools, they indoctrinate you. They don't teach you. It's a difference. So this is where we are right now. And we are in a whole new order of life. And in this new order of life, God is establishing his foundation with his people so that strategies and assignments can be released to infiltrate. Does everybody understand? See, you're not here by coincidence. God knew you were going to be here before he created the world. Now, our little peanut brain can't comprehend all that. I mean, he knew I was going to be here. Yes, he did. He knew we'd be corrected, rebuked, convicted, and altered into his image and likeness. That's what his plan is. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and uh, verse 18, let's speak it. For the message of the cross is what? Foolishness to those who are perishing, but those who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the world, of the wise. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God. It pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. Remember, the wisdom of the world is what you're seeing manifesting all over the place. See, they actually think they can outwit God. That's how stupid they are. They don't believe that there really is a God that watches over. There is no fear of God. There's no reverence. There's no respect. They call higher power, but they worship light bulbs. If it doesn't turn on, they don't get a message. Hallelujah. Verse 22. For the Jews request a sign, and Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those, or you, can, you know, you can change this too. To the Democrats, foolishness. You know what I'm saying? To the libertarians, a stumbling block. Does everybody understand? See, because it's not about Jews or Greeks. It's about either you're a believer or you're not. No matter who you are, if, you are, you are, if you're not a believer, you're an antichrist. Somebody got that? You're a what? Antichrist. Verse 24. But to those who are called, no matter who you are, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling or your invitation, brethren, that not many 
wise according to the flesh. Not many mighty, not many noble are what? Invited or called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. Aren't you glad you've been the foolish things of the world? You still are the foolish things of the world. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ, Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Again, you and I have been called out of darkness to battle against darkness. Amen? We've been called out of darkness to battle against darkness. We've been put in a life of purpose to destroy Satan's kingdom. As a warrior of Christ Jesus. I'm going to say that again. We have been put in a life of purpose to destroy Satan's kingdom as a warrior of Christ Jesus. Now, we are also released into the world to fulfill a strategic and multiple strategic assignments to destroy Satan's kingdom and rescue those who have been taken by him. Amen? So that we can expand the kingdom of Christ. So we've been released into the world for fulfills strategic assignments of destiny. Release into the world to fulfill strategic assignments of destiny. Is everybody with me? Why? Because we are in a new order of life right now. It's changed. The way things were are not going to be the same. Your foundation remains the same, but assignments will change with strategies coming them, with following them. Does everybody understand? You know, even in ministry, there are things to where, how we used to minister to people in certain ways, where the Lord has changed things around in ministering to people. Some areas, there's more of laying on the hands. Sometimes there's less laying on of hands because he wants people to look to him. Not to a man. But next Friday night, we're going to do a, something special. I'm going to ask everyone to write down your prayer requests. And after we get done playing in God's presence and worshiping, and the anointing comes, you're going to lay what it is that the Holy Spirit is asking you to ask God. And you're going to lay it at your feet. And we're going to come around and we're going to lay hands on you and touch and agree. It's called touch and agree. Where two come to pass, it comes to pass. Where two touch and agree, it comes to pass. Amen. So whatever it is, you're going to ask God specifically. Now don't ask stupid. Amen. Ask something that is pertaining to your walk in Christ. Something that you want. Whether it's a baptism of the Holy Spirit, whatever. No matter what more wisdom, more knowledge, whatever it is, ask him and lay it at your feet. And we're going to come around and lay hands on you, anoint you, and touch and agree. Whether you need healing, we're going to touch and agree. Amen? Whatever it may be. Because we are entering this new order and we must be prepared. So there are things that God is going to prepare you for. All your things that you're going through right now, your trials, your tribulations, all of this is preparation for this new order. Remember, we've been called out of darkness to battle darkness, put in a, a, a new life of purpose to destroy Satan's kingdom as warriors, and we've been le released into the world to fulfill strategic assignments of destiny. 2 Timothy 2. Hallelujah. In verse 1, 
2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Everybody there? You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. What's grace represent? God's plan. God's plan of escape. Amen? And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men and women or individuals who will be able to teach others also. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Then he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer. Even to the point of change, but the word of God is not changed. So in other words, in his assignments, he has suffered as an evildoer. Paul was sent out on many assignments. Timothy was sent out on many assignments. The apostles were sent out on many assignments. Each assignment had a strategic strategy involved in what they were going to do. Verse um, 10, therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, he cannot deny himself. Remind them of these things, charging them before the Lord not to strive about words to no profit to the ruin of the hearers. Be diligent to present yourself, approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing a word of truth. But shun profane and idle babblings, for they will increase to more ungodliness. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pretty amazing in the things that are going on right now. Verse 17, and their message will spread like cancer. Hymenius, Philetus are of this sort who have strayed concerning the truth, saying that the resurrection is already past, and they overthrow the faith of some. In other words, they've caused many to fall away. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Divine assignments in this new order of life, directed by the Father, overseen by Jesus, and activated by the Holy Spirit, will be in the anointing. In Romans 8. Again, the Father oversees it. I mean, it's directed by the Father. Jesus oversees it, and the Holy Spirit activates it. So the overseer is the Father. I mean, the director is the Father. The overseer is Jesus. And the activator is the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, and verse 12. New order. It's a new order of life we are in. Things are not the same. God will be strategically pay, placing people in different jobs. There'll be areas where there'll be a lot of distractions. There'll be enticements. Some people have, to, well, God's asking to remain in specific locations and jobs. But they'll be enticed by money to be removed out of position. Is everybody okay? This is where your connection with the Lord is going to let you know what to do or not. Remember, the Holy Spirit tells you all truth. Tells you things to come. In Romans 8, 12, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. But if you live according to the flesh, you will die. 
Yeah. <laughs> For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to what? You're going to die. But if you live according to the Spirit, what happens? Yes. Isn't that something? <laughs> glory to God. You're going to live. You're going to have a glorious, faithful, strong, powerful life in the Spirit. Fulfilling every assignment with a new strategy or and, and to complete what God has asked you to do. Amen? Verse 14, for as many as are what? Led by the Spirit of God, these are sons and daughters of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. That's maintaining an identity. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him. Remember, our sufferings is a part of training. Because we love to suffer. Verse 18. For I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed to us. For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Why? To take hold. To lead. That means there must be assignments with new strategies. For the, earnest for the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who, come on, read it with me, who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So listen, all of these things that are going on with this corruption, it's going to be delivered. They're going to, they're going to be destroyed. It's going to stop. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. For we were saved in this hope, but the hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. Endurance. So the sufferings of, or the, of the challenges as our, our training opportunities for me and you. It's to prepare for the next assignment. See, when you complete something God's asked you to do, and there are things that you don't even realize you completed. It could be the simplest assignment. Like being consistent. It can be the simplest con assignment. He rewards those things when there's a completion. He says he releases the promise. So every day, there's always something he's asking us to accomplish. Every day we should be asking the Lord, Lord, what is it that I can do to please you today? Amen? Sometimes he'll tell you you did by just your warfare. And sometimes he's going to tell you there's something he wants you to specifically do. And it can be very simple. Go visit someone. Pray for somebody else. Do something. And when you complete that assignment, and if he sends you somewhere of any purpose to see someone, he prepares you. He never sends you out unprepared. Never. You know why people are unprepared? Because they send themselves out. Luke 4. In verse 1, Luke 4, verse 1. Let's speak it together. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So Jesus got baptized in the Holy Spirit at the Jordan, right? Now he's led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. He was being challenged. Amen? 
And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. So listen, the devil didn't come the first day. He came out most likely on the last day or two. <laughs> Why? When he was hungry. You got to remember, he did not drink water or eat food for 40 days. And verse 3, And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become bread. Was he being tempted? Was he being challenged? Let's see how Jesus resisted him. But when Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Hello. He didn't call him any goofy names. Amen. He didn't even say, you devil. He said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word of God. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me, and I give to whom I wish. Now, was he lying? No. He had authority. He was now the ruler of the earth. But was he lying that he was going to give it to Jesus? Yes. <laughs> yes. Verse 7. Therefore, if you will worship me, all will be yours. What a liar. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is what? Written. You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then the devil brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of a temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. I mean, like commit suicide, I guess. I don't know. For it is written, Jesus responded, or no, he, he, he didn't, Jesus didn't respond yet. The devil, the devil was quoting scripture now. Does everybody see this? Who's quoting scripture? The devil, let me tell you, he knows the Bible inside out. Of course, it's going to kill him because the letter kills and the spirit brings life. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him up on a high pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge over you and keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, that's right, homie. It has been said, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from Jesus until a what? Opportune time. Now listen, if he did this to Jesus as he does it, do it to me and you? Yeah. If you don't think so, you're an idiot. Verse 14. Then, now here's the kicker. Jesus was tempted, 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 and resisted, resisted, and resisted. What is the reward of resistance? Strength. Then it says, then Jesus returned in the what? Power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region, and he taught in their synagogues, being glorified by all. Does everybody understand that? Overcoming temptations, attacks, trials bring strength. It is a reward of the resistance. And it is a preparation for the next assignment. See, sometimes things that you were freed from all of a sudden start coming back again. And you start resisting. Well, God is strengthening you for that specific reason. Why? Because he's preparing you for the next assignment. And he's giving you the, re reminding you of the strategies, how you overcame. Remember, the foundation is also become strengthened, but it stays the same. But the path of strategic strategy Changes because the assignment changes. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Is anybody okay? Matthew 16.
See, one of the things you cannot give into is pleasing man. You can't give into it. You must stay on course. That's where your foundation must be solid. It must be secure. It's you and God. It's always you and God. What did I say? I did. It's Matthew 16. Praise God. It's the next one after. Matthew 16. Is everybody there yet? Go to verse 13. Matthew 16, 13. Glory. When Jesus came into the region of what? Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And so they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say that I am? In other words, who am I to you? See, some people haven't gotten that yet. And Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ." the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. This is called revelation, not illumination. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, what is the rock? The rock is the anointing. The rock is the what? The anointing. Remember when Moses struck the rock, what came out? Living water. Amen? The anointing. And he says, and on this rock, on the anointing, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades or hell shall not prevail against it. So how is the church built? Now you got to understand something. Is it built on the word or on the anointing? And the anointing, yeah. It's the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. But again, is the word of God a part of the anointing? Yes. Yeah. And, and in verse 19, he says, I'm going to give you keys of the kingdom of heaven. So everybody has keys. You just don't know it sometimes. You don't hear it dingling. And I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you do, bind on earth, that's in the physical, will be bound in the spiritual. Does everybody understand that? So while you're praying on this side, and you're warfaring on this side, it's actually affecting the other side. So you're binding the powers of darkness. You're binding strong men. You're binding principalities. That's why your warfare prayers in your booklet are essential. Listen, you have angels working on your behalf. Why not bind the powers of darkness that are coming against the angels working on your behalf? You think you'd get something done better? Amen. See, they're assisting us, and we should be assisting them. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Does everybody see this? This is the anointing. It's constant. Now, there's levels of the anointing that are supplied for each assignment. To bind and loose. There's a specific anointing God releases. It could be a stronger anointing or a lesser anointing. But the, an anointing in the life of a believer should be constant, but it alters on the assignment. Does everybody understand that? In other words, you need a stronger anointing to pray for people's healing. Amen. You need a stronger anointing to pray for people's deliverance. You don't need a strong, as strong as anointing for those things compared to preaching. Does everybody understand it? But there's an anointing that teaches, isn't there? It's a teaching anointing. In fact, the Bible says that the anointing teaches us. And we want to be taught by the anointing of God, not by a humanite. Or a religious spirit. Praise God. Mark 16, 16. Glory. Hallelujah. 
Mark 16, 16. New order. Same foundation. Different assignments. You'll find it in the kingdom you never stop learning. And of course, the challenges never stop either. It's a part of learning. Amen? Glory. Mark 16. He who what? Believes. What's the word believe mean? Follows. It, and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not follow will be what? Condemned. And these signs will follow those who follow. In my name they will what? Cast out demons. Is that the first thing he says? Hello. This is by the anointing. Does everybody understand it? He says you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And you will have the authority over demonic forces. Now there's a, a special anointing for that. And it says they will speak with new tongues. It doesn't mean you're going to go learn Spanish or French or German. You're going to get another language called tongues. That's the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they will take up serpents. That doesn't mean we chase snakes. Amen? But if I find one, I'm going to be headed. And I won't use my wife's special knives in the kitchen. She bought me different ones. <laughs> and if they drink anything deadly, it will by, by no means hurt them. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to go drink cyanide or siphon gas and test God. Amen? And it says they will lay hands on the sick and they will what? They will recover. They will recover. See, the foundation stays the same, remains the same, but the, the strategies and the assignments change. Amen? The path will shift, and we must be led and able to submit and confirm everything that the Spirit is leading us to. It takes training. It takes practice. It doesn't come overnight. This is the process that we go through. Amen? This is a new order of life. It is in the new covenant that this is required now. See, so many people are still kind of like living in the old covenant. They're still bound by traditions. They're still, you know, think they're prophets of the old covenant. They're missing the whole thing. God's mercy and grace is abundant today. Acts 17. Hallelujah. Acts 17. In verse 16. You know, I just want to share with you also is because in the laying on of hands, you don't want anyone to lay hands on you you don't know. Even if you know them. <laughs> You better make sure that you're receiving the anointing and not somebody else's spirit. You know, I, I used to uh, minister at a location and they had a smoking pit for people there. I hated it. I said, tell them, why do you, why you got this thing here? Well, we let them smoke. Well, it's addiction. It promotes addiction. It's just another demon of nicotine. And... Uh, these guys, man, I'd be praying for certain people there and deliverance and they get free from cigarettes and they'd be, then they go around and have somebody lay hands on them that's uh, smoking. See, you don't realize, even when I go to another church, I don't let people have to lay hands on me at all unless I specifically know that pastor 
Other than that, I won't let them touch me. I don't want anybody else's garbage. I have a hard enough time keeping myself clean. Hello? <laughs> Same thing in my home. We clean our house out all the time. See, we've got to maintain an, an area of clean atmosphere. And you must maintain a clean temple. So be careful who prays for Listen, somebody can pray for you. Okay, if they come to lay hands on you, tsh, no, no touch me. I'll pray with you. But do not lay hands on me. Or I'll lay hands on you. Hello? So don't go out there letting people just lay hands on you. You'll be pay, receiving their stuff. I've had people come back, lay hands on me. No, I ain't, the Lord's not told me to lay hands on you. I don't want to go. Is everybody okay? So be careful. That is just a warning as you begin to grow and mature and you go to another church or whatever, man. You be careful who lays hands on you. If you do not know who's laying hands on you, don't let them. I don't like it when people go to a church and, every, and the pastor goes, Hey, everybody lay hands on Whistle's name. Man, run. That's how many people are struggling today. They thought they were in, uh, the worship was great, everything was great, and, his, and, and then a, somebody said, or the pastor, whoever, let everybody lay hands on this person. Listen, the person's demonized and possessed. So that's gonna, not going to change anything. Does everybody understand? Be careful, because there'll be an impartation. Hallelujah. Acts 17, verse 16. I know people are still struggling today because they allowed somebody else to lay hands on them. Verse 16, is everybody there to speak it? Now, while Paul waited for them in Athens, his spirit was provoked within him when he saw the city was given over to idols. Now, I want you to know that Paul was sent on assignment, all right? While he was on assignment, another assignment came about. Therefore, he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshipers and in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. Then certain Epicurean and whatever they are, static philosophers encountered him. And some said, what does this babble, what does babbler want? want to say. Others said, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods because he preached to them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, may we know what this new doctrine is of what you speak. For you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. For all the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. What a life. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceived in all things that you are very religious. That was not a compliment, uh, uh, you know, a compliment. I want you to understand. For I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship. Remember, he was irritated by seeing these idols. And I even found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything since he gives to all life, breath, and all things. And he made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord and hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your prophets have said, for we are also his offspring. 
Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? Repent and turn from these things. Because he has appointed a day of which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance to these things by raising him from the dead. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, while others said, we will hear you again on this matter. So I am brought this up in the area where Paul was ready in season and out. His maintain, his um, foundation was maintained. He was led by the steer, Spirit on an assignment. But even while on, a, on the assignment, another assignment happened. Why? Because he's flexible. He was being led. Amen? And while this other assignment was released, he got to infiltrate and share. Many of them followed him. Many of them mocked him. It doesn't matter. He, was told, he did what he was told to do. Now, did he cast out devils there? No. He didn't do anything there. Does everybody understand? He just preached the word and he left. That was it. Is everybody okay? So again, there are certain areas where God has prepared us to do. There are certain strategies. There's an assignment. But the foundation maintains the same so that you are ready in season and out no matter what. Luke 14. Now, there are, there are, God knows what we can handle. Does everybody understand? So if he knows that you're not ready to handle an assignment while you're on assignment, he won't do it. He won't release it. Because he, be, he would be concerned that you go to the assignment and don't complete the one he sent you on. Luke 14, 25. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them all, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So if you're not in that position, is God going to trust you on an assignment? No. no. He sends his disciples. Verse 27, and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. God sends who? His disciples. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he is, has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation, he is not able to finish all who see it begin to what? Mock him, saying this man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Or else while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. That's new life, isn't it? Amen. You know, we must be willing to forsake it all and to maintain the foundation and complete the assignments. Now, building the foundation has assignments. So there's a completion of the assignments that build the foundation. Amen? You know, people come into the discipleship house and there's a nine-month assignment. Then there's a one-year aftercare assignment. How many is in this house that did the aftercare assignment? Amen. See, that's completion. The nine months is not completion. The aftercare is completion. See, too many people think that they, they're good at nine months when they're out on three wheels and they need four.
Hallelujah. Then they're always going in circles because they can never find that one wheel. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5. For completing your aftercare. First Pete chapter 5. I think we know the scripture. Verse 5. Whoa, happy days. You know, I, I can only share with you that year after care strengthens. S puts the solid, solid. Doesn't mean, you're, doesn't mean that you're perfect, you'll make mistakes, but you're solid. Verse 5, likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with what? Humility. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Be what? Sober, which means what? Alert. Be vigilant, which means consistent, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by everyone in the kingdom of God, your brotherhood in the world. Now, here's the kicker. Now, may, the God, may God, the God of all grace who called us, to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered, challenged, hello, been attacked, tempted for training. Amen. After you've been what? Trained. Does somebody get this? This is the training. After you've been trained a while, <laughs> that it would perfect you, establish you, strengthen, and settle you. Why? For the next assignment. Always something will come that will happen. And he wants to prepare you for that assignment. Why? Because it's coming. It's coming. Next thing you know, somebody comes across your path that was associated with your past or whatever it was. And it's like, man, you know what? That's why I was challenged. Just I remember these, you know, uh, God was preparing me for this. God never sends you out unprepared. And the one thing you never want to do is step out on assumption. People, I'm, I'm stepping out in blind faith. Run. No such thing as blind faith. Amen? No such thing. Either you, your faith is because you heard it and you did it. You never walk out on assumption. The Bible says be anxious for what? Nothing. Not everything. Nothing. And bring your requests before the Lord. And then he will tell you. Everybody has to make a decision of something every day. Amen? So if you're led by the Spirit, not by fear, He will confirm everything you're going to do or He's going to give you and prepare you. This is where relationship is so important. But again, it starts with a foundation. You know how you build that? Worship. Worship, worship, worship. Some people still don't get it. Worship. So we are being trained, we're being perfected, we're being established, we're being strengthened, and we're being settled for the next assignment. Is everybody okay? Ephesians 4. Everything's working to the good if you let it. Will it work to the good if you're not cooperating? No. <laughs> Ephesians 4.17. Glory. Let's speak it together. This I say therefore in testifying the Lord that you should what? No longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk 
in the fertility of their mind. You know, they walk by assumption. They walk by, they make decisions in how they feel. Having their understanding what? Darkened. Being alienated from the life of God. Because of the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their hearts. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness. To the work of uncleanness with greediness. That's a lot of deception. But you've not so learned Christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him. As the truth is in Jesus that you do what? You put off concerning your former conduct and desires. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind or your thoughts by the word of God. And that you put on the new man who was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but don't sin. That's called righteous anger. But don't be angry at the person. Be angry at the enemy that's influencing them. Amen? I mean, if we could... Anyways. Yes. <laughs> Some people need the hell slapped out of them. Make room for heaven. Hallelujah. Be angry and don't sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the what? The devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who is in need. That means be ready for the next assignment. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for the necessary edification that it may impart grace to the hearers. You know how many times you're driving down the street and there's somebody begging? God's prepared you for that assignment. Sometimes it's not to help. And sometimes it is to help. It all depends. Amen? So this is where we must be led. He says... Let, not, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary for edification that I may part grace to the ears. And don't grieve the what? Holy Spirit of God. Does disobedience grieve him? Yeah. By whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all what? Malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you put on a new man is this is required by the Spirit of God. Listen, the more that you are consistent, the more that you are alert, the more diligent you are, the more God can trust you. Amen. The more He can trust you. Everything is earning trust. Everything is earned in the kingdom. Everything. Whatever you're doing behind closed doors, God knows. And whatever you're not doing behind closed doors, God knows. And I'm going to close in Proverbs 4. New order. Proverbs 4. Verse 1. Let's speak it. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father. And give, an, give attention to no understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my mother, my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom and get understanding. What does wisdom do? Tells you what to do. What does understanding do? Tells you how to do it. Do not forsake, forget, or turn away from the words of my mouth. Verse 6. Do not forsake her. She will preserve you. 
Love her. She will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and all of your getting, get understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory. She will deliver to you. Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and, are, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction and do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. That's why we pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding every day. Amen? Remember, we have entered a new order of life. Building that foundation, maintaining that foundation, strengthening that foundation, and from that foundation will come new assignments with strategies. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal this word by the blood and seal it with the anointing that it may penetrate every part of our being and bring to remembrance those things. We ask for your forgiveness and mercies as you prepare our hearts to receive communion from you and that you would fill us, continue to keep us in oneness with your spirit. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Praise God. Amen.